JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, motorcyclist hospitalized following Mandeville crash. A motorcyclist has been hospitalized following an accident on Lower Decatur Road in Mandeville this afternoon. I witness report that shortly after 1 p.m., a Toyota RAV4 collided with the motorcyclist. It was reportedly flung from the motorcycle on impact. A nurse who was at a nearby gym rushed to the motorcyclist assistance. She said that he sustained head and neck injuries. A passing motorist rushed the injured man to the Mandeville Regional Hospital. The female driver of the Toyota RAV4 was later taken to hospital by the police. She received minor injuries to her left hand. Police seek public's help to locate robbery suspect. The halfway tree police are seeking the public's assistance in locating a man who is believed to be involved in a case of robbery. He is said to frequent the Molines Road and the Seaward Drive areas. The police are appealing to anyone with information that can assist them in finding this man to contact the halfway tree police at 876-926-8184. Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Man shot dead in Truro, Westmoreland. Ski Fernando, otherwise called Q, was the last evening shot dead by unknown assailants in the commute of Truro in Westmoreland. According to reports, Nando was driving through his community when he was shot by people who were trailing him in another motor vehicle. He was later pronounced dead. The police said that he was not on their radar and that while investigations are ongoing, they are pursuing strong leads. Nando, originally from the community of George's Plain in the parish, was 36 years of age. He lives behind two children. 12-year-old Renika Rainford reported missing. A high alert has been activated for 12-year-old Renika Rainford of Westmead, Bridgeport, St. Catherine, who has been missing since Thursday, May 6. She's of brown complexion, medium build, and about 4 feet 5 inches tall. Reports from the Bridgeport Police are that about 5 p.m., Renika was last seen at home wearing a pink blouse and blue pants. She has not been heard from since. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Renika Rainford is being asked to contact the Bridgeport Police at 876-988-2697. Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Councillor gets tongue lashing for deplorable road. Councillor Carlin Benjamin and members of her team on Tuesday were on the receiving end for tongue lashing from taxi operators who are livid at the condition of the Palmer's Cross Main Road in Clarendon, which they say is severely affecting their health and finances. The taxi driver's anger reached boiling point when Councillor Benjamin of the Jamaica Labour Party, Palmer's Cross Division, and a small team of supporters sought to intervene as the drivers and residents complained about the state of the road, which they pointed out was marled two years ago but has not been asphalted. Benjamin attempted to assure the taxi operators and residents that road work would soon resume and said the project was stalled to allow the National Water Commission, NWC, to lay new pipes underground and to make the necessary connections in order to solve a water issue in and around the area. However, our audience expressed frustration, saying it appeared that the people leading the project were improvising as they went along, while the dust was creating serious health problems for them. Minawai, you're not in front of you, one taxi driver told Benjamin, shrugging her off. Every time them keep meeting at the same thing, I told you now the road gone. Them need to fix the road. If I just put little asphalt in the middle, I made the edge of them stay. Look on the dust in the people in the yard, he said, pointing to trees in nearby residences with the leaves that have turned white from dust. This I carry a new car now, and a $27,000 that cost me for bushing inside the rock and pinion. I had three different mechanics me have to go. A long time the road I go on so. Every time I promise, pant up a promise. We need the road for fix. Every day we have to wash the car and a 500 have to wash the car, you know, he said. The councillor's team indicated that it made no sense to have paved the roadway only to have it dug up again if pipes underneath kept bursting. They shared 
that the NWC had changed the pipe network from Palmer's Cross to Twin Palms and is gradually connecting residents to the new line to ensure they receive adequate piped water. If Water Commission completes everything, then after the meeting this week Wednesday, the road work should resume. I think most times you are not communicating with the residents and that causes a bit of frustration. All they are hearing is that the road work soon fix and they are not seeing anything and they don't know what is happening, one member of her team said. When contacted for comment, Pernell Charles Jr., Member of Parliament for Clarendon Southeastern, which includes Palmer's Cross, said that the road work should resume any time now as the NWC has completed connecting the respective households to its system. I have been in constant dialogue with the NWC and NWA and the contractors. The work had been stalled so that the NWC could complete some water system work and thereafter NWA would continue. The NWC work was prolonged because of a number of different events, including the circumstances with COVID-19 and the different protocol issues. NWC has confirmed that their side of the work is complete and the contractor should be completing the work in short order. The people in the area have been patient. They have endured a lengthy delay. I understand their frustration. We are pushing to ensure that the work continues and is completed in a timely manner, Charles said. Wetting of the roadway to reduce the dust was not being done as consistently. So we spoke to the contractor about it and we have gotten assurances that it will be done. When the NWC put in the new system, a lot of breaches were revealed so they had to go through a lengthy process to complete water rehabilitation in the area. That is complete now, so the road work should move hastily so the people can have the benefit of the road they deserve, he added. One of Charles's constituents, Virginia Pennant, expressed disappointment, saying that one of the main reasons she decided to vote for the first time in her life was that residents had been promised good roads. However, to date, numerous bad roads exist throughout Palmer's Cross and other areas in Clarendon. One senior citizen who was seen walking along the roadway said, Dosa Kilwe, and lamented that the schedule to wet the surface to keep the dust down was not being kept. A bartender said she was tired of having to constantly wipe dust off the bottles of the beverages on the shelves inside her bar. A pure dust. You will outside attack and dust just ice up, she said. Robert Sewell. A taxi operator who shared that a protest over the issue was imminent said, The dust affect the people in the surroundings, their households and shops. He pointed to a doctor's office across the road saying, You see that doctor? That doctor make money around the area and people not even have money for medication. In a palmer's grass, people are sick of. Millions uncollected by recipients of government's tablet initiative. Millions of dollars have been left uncollected by recipients of the government's Own Your Own Device program. Minister of Education, Favel Williams, has indicated that the ministry has so far issued 20,207 vouchers to successful applications. Under the program, the ministry provides vouchers valued at $20,000 each towards the purchase of a laptop or tablet. Williams, speaking in the House of Representatives on Wednesday, informed that only 9,524 vouchers have been redeemed. This leaves a difference of 10,683, which translates to over $213 million. The Education Ministry says our ministry will be examining the program to see why recipients have not redeemed their electronic vouchers. The Own Your Own Device program is an initiative through which the government is assisting with the purchase of tablets or laptops for students who are in need but are not on the program of advancement through health and education path. It benefits needy students in primary and secondary schools across Jamaica. Parents or guardians are provided with a $20,000 electronic voucher to buy a device from an approved vendor. Parents or guardians will be responsible for the difference in the cost of the laptop or tablet. Leader of the opposition, Mark Golding, suggested that members of parliament could be provided with a listing of vouchers issued but not redeemed in their constituency. That would be very helpful, he said. 90 new COVID cases as death toll passes 800. Another three COVID-related deaths have been recorded in Jamaica, while 90 new cases of the virus were confirmed in the past 24 hours. The latest figures put the country's pandemic totals 
to 46,428 confirmed cases and 801 deaths. 49 women and 41 men within the 1 to 95 years age range account for the new cases, which were recorded in all parishes except Trelawney. St. Catherine had 23 cases, 19 were in Kingston and St. Andrew, 17 in St. Anne, 9 in Clarendon, 6 in St. James, 4 in St. Elizabeth, 3 each in Manchester and Westmoreland, 2 in Hanover, and 1 each in Portland and St. Thomas. The three people who died were a 48-year-old man from Portland, a 66-year-old woman from Manchester, and an 88-year-old man from Kingston and St. Andrew. Jamaica also recorded 125 recoveries yesterday, bringing that total to 22,018. There are 23,267 active cases, 231 patients in hospital, 11 moderately ill, and 21 critically ill and 23,025 people in home isolation. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember, subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.